Did you know the people of North Korea think Portugal won the 2010 World Cup? The story I'm about to tell you is bizarre, and for many, it may also be amusing. But it underlines the tragic reality that certain people live, walled up and isolated from the rest of the world under the weight of a regime that even blocks sport. Think how it can be to live inside abstract walls and that your brain washed through propaganda that the reality you think is totally different from that of the rest of the world. Let's go step by step. North Korea qualifies for the 2010 World Cup for the first time since 1966. It is a great success, and obviously a matter of pride for the whole nation, but most importantly for those who command it. North Korea, however, is a put in a tough group with Brazil, Portugal and Ivory Coast. The opening match, which is not broadcasted live, is immediately against the highly rated Brazilians. On the 15th of June 2010, North Korea managed to keep a clean sheet in the first half, but lose to goals from Mike Hone and Elano. For there's still a 2-1 finish that soon excites all of North Korea. It is an acceptable defeat against such a strong team. I therefore they have high hopes for the match against Portugal the following week. Cristiano Ronaldo's team drew 0-0 with the Ivorians and therefore absolutely needed to give the role to access the second round. National TVs decide to broadcast the meeting live ahead of the great occasion. Something that usually didn't happen. Oh my oh my, it's underway. Raul Morales breaks the deadlock at minute 29. At half time it's still 1-0. Then Simao, Hugo Almeida, Thiago, all score within 7 minutes. 4-0, and then, and then that's it. North Korea, all of a sudden, the game is off television. The signal disappears. The images are gone. They cannot allow the country to be humiliated like this. The match will end 7-0, Portugal will have no mercy. But the alternative reality created by the dictator leads the population to believe that the team only lost 4-0. Since that day, no more images of the World Cup are transmitted. Indeed, to ensure the reputation of the country remains intact, the North Koreans are told that their team offered heroic resistance against the favourites to win. Cristiano Ronaldo's very strong Portugal is a devastating team and therefore losing 4-0 should be seen as heroic and a matter of pride. Of course, why not using the fact they lost to suddenly say that the team you lost to is the best in the world? Ronaldo soon becomes a national hero in North Korea, the only one capable of beating the very strong North Korean national team. The World Cup continues, but far from South Africa, in the northern part of Korea, Portugal's story continues to be tailed, while in truth they're quickly knocked out by Spain. There will be no more images of the World Cup, no more matches will be broadcasted, but the only thing that is being told is how the dominant Portuguese team has demolished every national team in its path, to the point of lifting the World Cup. To recap this absurd story, in the moment of Portugal's fourth goal, the regime decides to interrupt the signal of the match obscuring the elimination and justifying the performance by making believe that Portugal were the strongest team in the world and that had to truly give the role to be able to be the team like North Korea. The most absurd thing is that it doesn't end there. In fact, four years later, right around the time of the 2014 World Cup, a North Korean video circulates where the state TV report shows people celebrating after they have reached the World Cup final. Guess against whom? obviously against the magnificent Portugal of Cristiano Ronaldo. In the video clip, all games are broadcasted, but obviously the North Korean people, blocked by the regime and submerged by censorship, cannot know that it's a fake. North Korea is reported to have won 7-0 against Japan, 4-0 against the United States and 2-0 against China. And out of this world story, and the video is available on YouTube by the Korea News Backup Channel, and has over 10 million views. Sometime later, it was obviously announced that Korea became world champion. While the first story was verified with certainty by the Portuguese Alvaro later, the second one must be taken with doubt. 
It could be a fake, but in spite of everything, Korean censorship is a real problem. So much so that it's secrecy that makes sure that almost nothing is known about what actually happens inside the country. We can have a laugh about it, so that the North Koreans interrupt the signal to avoid humiliation, so that they say that Portugal is world champion, but where are the human rights? In North Korea, no one has ever seen Iniesta's goal, no one has ever seen Spain triumph. It is seriously worrying that even a popular thing such as sport is being censored.